I am out here in my garden where it's about 13 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 10 below zero Celsius, which is just cold. Unless maybe you're Canadian or from up north, Peter McKinnon, Justin Bieber, if you're watching this, let me know if that's like Schwartz weather for you. But for me, that's cold. Needless to say, nothing is alive in my garden except for some garlic that I have growing over there, which is doing okay. Um, my tomato plants, as you can see behind me, are just frozen withered vines. But if you'll recall, before they froze to death, we took a cutting and planted them in a hydroponics container in my basement. So we're going to go inside and take a look at the progress and see how it's doing, and also take a look at some of the problems that I'm having. Um, I've got some yellow spots developing on the leaves, which I believe is due to nutrient deficiency, but which one is the question? So we'll talk about why that happens and maybe some of the solutions. So let's go inside and take a look. Ooh, it is much better, much more comfortable. All right, let's talk about these tomato plants now. I have two plants back here, one that I put in a deep water culture and one that I put in my ebb and flow container, along with my lettuce and my single radish that I'm growing just to see if I can. The one in the deep water culture is doing much, much better than the one in the ebb and flow system. Um, I've got lots of tomatoes on it. I've got lots of blossoms on it. It's got lots of leaves, whereas the one in the ebb and flow system is kind of sparse, um, doesn't have as many blossoms and doesn't have as many tomatoes. So let's go back and take a look. On the left, we have the tomato plant in the ebb and flow container. You'll notice that it is doing well. It's got some yellow leaves. We'll talk about those in a minute. But overall, I think it's doing very well. It's got some tomatoes. There's an elephant back there for scale. So you can tell how big those tomatoes are. Um, I've got some blossoms back here. Give those a shake. If you grow tomatoes inside, you've got to shake them in order to pollinate them, unless you've got some sort of wind blowing over them. Uh, I've also got some lettuce growing in the same container. This one's doing okay. Let's go take a look at the plant in the deep water culture now. Here is the tomato plant, the single tomato plant growing in a deep water culture. You'll notice that this thing is massive. It is taking over the entire grow space. I've got lots of fruit on it. I've got ripening tomatoes. I've got ripe tomatoes that I need to pick down there. I've got more blossoms, more tomatoes coming on. Um, this one's doing awesome. So what is the difference between the one in the deep water culture and the one in the ebb and flow container? Well, I don't think it's the method that I'm using. I think it's the primarily the nutrient mix that I've been using. Because this one's growing lettuce at the same, in the same container as I'm growing a tomato, I've been using a lower concentration of nutrients. Lettuce needs fewer nutrients than a tomato plant does. If you give it too many, uh, if you make the concentration too hot, so to speak, you'll get tip burn. You kind of see we've got a little bit of that going on here. I've kind of tried to walk the line um, between giving the tomatoes what they need and the lettuce not too much. But over here, since it's the only thing in the container, I've given it what it needs and it's doing fantastic. But uh, you may have noticed there's a couple problems. It's not all blushing, tomato, blushing tomatoes and, and blossoms. You'll see I've got some yellowing leaves here. The leaves that were down near the base I've pruned off. They were yellow. They kind of fell off, but they're starting to grow back, uh, which is awesome. But they, they just kind of turned yellow like this and fell off. Now, if you're outside, that'll happen naturally because the leaves down below don't get as much light. But inside, I didn't know why quite why that was happening i think it has to do with lack of nitrogen i'm using the general hydroponics three-part solution flora bloom flora grow and flora micro um let's see if we can focus on this if you can see it at all this is i've been using the blooming and ripening blend which has the lowest amount of nitrogen which is what the flora grow, grow, the flora grow is primarily nitrogen Flora Bloom, on the other hand, has more of these nutrients. It's a 054. It's got a lot of magnesium in it. It's got a lot of potash, phosphate, things like that. When tomato plants don't have enough nitrogen, the leaves near the bottom will turn yellow, whereas the leaves out near the perimeter and the outer rim will stay nice and green and not have any problems, and they'll kind of fall off and die. So to counter that, I'm going to give it a little bit more nitrogen, uh, keep up the magnesium and other stuff like that, calcium, the micronutrients, just to keep the tomatoes healthy and the fruiting healthy and not to grow too much foliage. I'd rather have fruit than foliage. Um, other than that, I think that will solve my problem. I may have a little bit of a problem too with maybe some mildew or fungus. See these little spots on here? I haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the plant too much at this point. Back to the tomato plant in the ebb and flow container. You notice these leaves, these leaves are different than the other leaves in that they are yellow here and green in the veins. And this is very typical of a magnesium deficiency. Now, the in the three-part series that I mentioned, magnesium is most prominent in the bloom mix. I haven't been giving this as much bloom because, again, lettuce. I've been giving it kind of a middle ground, and I think it just doesn't have 
or didn't have. Maybe it's okay now because the leaves out here, again, in the outer rim are doing fine. But uh, maybe it didn't have as much enough magnesium when it first started growing. So what I'm going to do to that, how, what I'm going to do to correct that is I'm going to eat this lettuce over here. And then I can give this the nutrient treatment that it deserves. So there is the update on my tomato plant that I grew from a cutting. If you didn't see how I started this, go check out my last video. Yeah, I'll link it here. I've never done this before and it seems to be working fantastically. I'm going to plant something else next that I've never done before. Uh, so hope you'll stay tuned for that. I'll make a video about it here in a little while. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.